everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of UCTV Alive for Kids. It's really good to have your company this week. I'm Dr. Louise Grimmer from the University of Tasmania and I am the new host of the show. I work at the business school at the university and I teach and research in marketing and advertising and retailing. And last year I was lucky enough to be a guest on the program and now I've come back as the new host of the show. So welcome and I'm really excited to be here. Now this week we've got a fabulous topic that I'm really interested in and I'm sure you will be too. And our topic this week is bees wax, oh, try and say that quickly, bees wax wraps and sustainability. And I'm really excited to welcome our guest today who is Marie Backer. Welcome to the show Marie. Thanks so much for coming in to talk to us about this yeah. really important topic of sustainability. Hi, Hi Louise. Hi everyone. Marie, you work at Environment Protection Authority Tasmania and you're really interested in reducing the impact of waste on the environment and particularly the impact of waste on marine animals. And you're going to share with us today lots of tips about how we can reduce, reuse and recycle our waste. Now I know that you're really passionate about this topic. How did you become so interested in it? Um, I realised I grew up with um, a mum who had grown up during the war, the Second World War, that's a very, very long time ago. <laughs> and if she was still alive, she'd be about 90 now. But um, her upbringing was uh, on a farm, and actually the Germans invaded Holland, where she lived, and the Dutch are also known for being very frugal. So growing up, there wasn't much food, there wasn't much around, they had to optimise everything they had. And I realise now that I'm a grown up that that did have an influence on me. So we just automatically just save things, reuse things. We didn't throw much food out. We eat what was in the fridge. You know, we, we just use what there was. So it's something that's really been a lifelong passion yeah. of yours. Yeah. And, and now you've actually got a job where you can sort of mm. put this, this passion every day. So you work at Environment Protection Authority Tasmania. Yes. What sorts of things do you do in this job every day? Um, I just want to add one more thing because my brother used to take me bushwalking and that created a love of the environment. So the, the kind of frugality, the saving things and also loving nature kind of fit together for me. So that meant a job in the environmental area, which I love. So at work, I work for EPA Tasmania and we're basically like the environment cops for the state, okay? So there are people there that can, um, if there's an oil spill, they try and find out who it is and have it cleaned up. They look after the big factories and make sure they don't waste, uh, they don't waste too much or pollute. Um, we try to make sure there's clean air and clean water. Um, and where I fit in, we have this goal, which is sustainable use of resources. So um, yeah, that fits the kind of recycling and so on. And I work in the policy area and we're doing exciting work at the moment, making laws and regulations and um, policies which are really like broad sort of dreams for reducing waste and so on. So it's basically an office job and um, being here today is the fun part. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and also I write resources for teachers, so I'll do a little plug now. I've done quite a few resources that look a little bit like this teacher's. So you can teach children about waste and I've got five ranging from kinder to grade five. So that helps teachers teach about waste. Oh fantastic. So I spend a lot of my time writing these things for teachers because I can't go to every school. No, so that's why something yeah. like this is so fantastic yeah, isn't it? Yeah, because I noticed there's like ten schools today so hello. <laughs> yes, hello everyone. Yeah. So and today is exciting too because we're actually going to do something practical. Yes. You're going to do something practical. Yes. So um, you're going to actually show us in a moment how we can make uh, something that can help us reduce plastic waste. Yes. And while we do sort of our practical things, I'm going to talk to you about how we can reduce waste mm. and, and the sorts of things that, that everyone can do. So um, let's start off by just with this sort of overall question. Why is it so important that all of us try to reduce our waste? Mm. Well, everyone's heard about climate change now. And when we put waste in landfill, it creates uh, a gas. Sometimes um, we think all gases are smelly, but this is a, a quiet little non-smelly gas called methane. And methane is a really powerful greenhouse gas, which means that um, 
it's a lot more, even more powerful, 21 times more powerful than carbon dioxide uh, as an impact on um, the, the air. And that inf influences our climate, which will bring about drought, bushfire, and horrible things like that. So wow. if we're putting rubbish in the tip, it creates the methane, which affects the climate. Okay. So avoiding that is good. Um, uh, tips can cause other smelly gases mm. and flies and seagulls and sometimes seagulls uh, if a tip's near an airport can affect um, aeroplanes that fly by. Mm. So it's all of these sort no of flow on effects. fly into a seagull. No. That's no. tragic. Um, also groundwater contamination. So we don't see what's under the ground but there's a whole river system under the ground and if we're not managing our waste properly and we're trying to do that a lot more, a lot better these days, but old tips in particular leach out water into the groundwater. So when it rains on the rubbish, if there's not um, a modern landfill like these days, um, it can go into the groundwater. And down the road, people might be taking that groundwater mm. for their farm or their mm. crops or even for drinking. Mm. So tips are bad. There's another reason, isn't there? Oh, we're, if we put, I don't know, if I make this pair of scissors, everything that goes into making that pair of scissors all the energy, everything that goes into making that, all the mining, and yeah, it's, it's a big thing to make something. Mm. And if we just throw it away, we've kind of lost, it's hard to imagine mm. that, but we've lost the energy that went into mm. making that. And then we'd have to burn more fossil fuels or whatever to make a new pair of scissors. So why do we need to throw that one away? And I learned the other day that a ton of concrete is equivalent to the energy that would be required to fuel an ordinary house for a whole year. So wow. if we waste concrete, we're wasting a lot of energy. Right. So there's um, another reason. Well, oh, 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 now tips are filling up. And who wants to put your hand up if you want to live next to a tip? Not no. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So look, let's keep chatting yes. while we start to make the special thing that you're going to show us how to make today. Yes. So uh, Marie is going to, uh, we're going to change our camera angle. There we go. And hopefully you can see, uh, yes you can, what Marie is doing here. Now, Marie, tell us what you're doing first and then we'll keep chatting about yeah. this important topic. Well, we're going to make, it is hard to say fast, <laughs> it's very beeswax hard. wraps. Beeswax wraps. And beeswax wraps are an alternative to using glad or cling wrap, like for your sandwiches or your muffin or your apple. You can take something, some food to school or to work in a beeswax wrap and reduce yeah the use of plastic and it's fabric I can also show you what it's made of in a minute but for now I'll just cut out some fabric while mm. we're chatting so you can use sort of any kind of fabric that oh, you've got yeah oh no not woolen fabric or acrylic because it's going to be heated okay so, so you it's don't want to put cotton, cotton yeah fabric. cotton fabric yeah. yeah and please don't go and buy cotton fabric because a lot of people have this sort of stuff at home so it's just a light cotton. You could use some tea towels. You could reuse some tea towels. You could. Thin fabric um, is, no, thinnish is good. A tea towel is quite thick. That's true. And it will take up a lot of the, the wax that we're going oh, to Oh, okay. Using. So just thin so cotton fabric this, is best. This yeah. will all make sense in a little while. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just start cutting. Yeah. And sometimes it's really good to have a pattern that's got squares in it because then you don't have to muck around with the ruler or whatever. I've got some Christmas stuff here which has got lines on it which helps me or you can have a ruler um, to make one the size that you like I also like to optimize what I've got that means if I've got a nice piece I'll use as much of it as I can to make a reasonable size one you know if I've got tiny little off cuts I think oh I can make a small one out of that <laughs> so yeah. So you can make them in different sizes because you're obviously yes. going to be using them to wrap up different sized things, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah. I might have um, a pear, which when I put in my bag without a wrapper, gets <laughs> squashed all over my books. It's terrible. <laughs> so I like to wrap a pear in the beeswax wrap or a muffin or you might have some crackers mm. or, you know, if you somewhere where you're allowed to have nuts and sultanas, you can make a little pouch. Oh yes, what a great idea. Out of the beeswax yeah. wrap. So it's food safe, um, in my opinion. 
can do more work on that, but a lot of people are using them. Yeah. So I wouldn't put meat in them. We'll okay. talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. So Marie's just going to cut out some material and show us. So you need to get it sort of, I guess, quite as straight as you can yeah. when you're cutting it. Uh, these scissors I borrowed from a friend. They're not as sharp as I thought. That's no. all right. While you're cutting, I'm going yeah. to ask you some questions. Okay. Because <laughs> we, we've got some fabulous things to talk about. So, Marie, uh, how much... I, I, you might have mentioned this, but I, my brain has gone a bit fuzzy. How much waste do we actually generate per person every year? Oh, we make about um, 1.5 tonnes per person per year. That's a huge amount. It's huge. Um, in Tasmania, we compost... And recycle about 34% of that. And is that good sort of on average across um, Australia or could we do a lot no, better? No, not really. Mm. In rural areas it's kind of mm, understandable. But Victoria, for example, have a 75% recycling and composting rate. Oh, we've so got a bit of catching up to do We've got some then. catching up to do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're getting there. What sorts of things, um, you know, do we sort of, I guess, end up in the tip what, what, what are we wasting? What's the sort of waste that we're, mm. we're getting rid of? Um, this, what we're left with is about a tonne of waste per person per annum, which if you um, saw that, on the, it would fill the back of a ute. Wow. Um, I haven't answered your question because I haven't No, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't answer the last one properly. It's, it's, you know, this by this by this, and there's 500,000 people in Tasmania. Wow. So if you had... The back of a ute times 500,000 every year, and we all live to, oh, the children might know how old your oldest grandparent is, maybe 80. So if we're 80 times half a tonne mm. of, of 80 times a tonne into the tip, that's a lot of people. A lot that's of a lot of people. And, yeah, and it's um, toys, books, oh gosh, tables. Bikes, bikes bottles, bikes, cans. Bottles, cans, plates. All sorts of concrete, things. Concrete. Um, building materials that, you know, are left over from a building site, cardboard boxes, offcuts from factories. There's so All much. All sorts of things. Now, I'm just keeping my eye on the time ah. here, Marie, because we've been chatting so much. We'll, we'll cut this one and um, we might just uh, get our other piece of equipment ready to make our special beeswax wrap. Gosh. Time the time flies. flies when you're having fun time flies. and talking about interesting things. Yes. Goodness me. So we're just cutting just cutting off the, the edges there to make yeah. it nice and straight. And maybe for the purpose of this, if we're in a little bit of a hurry, it won't be perfect square. No, that's this, all right. This would be good for wrapping on top of something on a bowl in the fridge. That's what I was going to ask you. Wrap. You can use them. You don't have to wrap things in them, can you? You can actually use no. them on, on a bowl. You could put them on top of container. a cake. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. So. That's great. All right. Let's pretend that was perfect. It looks perfect to me. <laughs> there we go. There's our material. <laughs> yes. And... We are going to just bring over our frying pan. So this itself was from an op shop. Um, if you wanted to get it tagged and tested, that would be safe. Meaning that, um, you know, some electrical things you might want to make sure they're, mm. they're safe. But I know this one is. Some families might already have one of these sorts yeah. of frying pans at home. I, I had one of these when I was growing up. And you don't really want to use it for anything else they're so sticky yep so find an old one yep um good tip safe. yep <laughs> um i've already made a little batch before and i'm realizing that we're running out of time but the recipe is and we'll put this on the um information later after the show one cup of beeswax oh, and yeah. where do you get that from um, if you're in hobart it's from gould's pharmacy okay yeah or if you know a beekeeper yes. that is ideal so um uh, I, I won't make it up but that's beeswax from a beekeeper or a store yeah maybe a eco store and a quarter of a cup of pine resin oh. now that's the sticky part if you make beeswax wraps without any stickiness, oh. it doesn't stick to your 
things. So that's resin, and where yeah. where do, where can you get resin? Again, in Goulds. In Goulds. Or maybe on okay. the internet. So yeah. Goulds Pharmacy, for those of you who are in Hobart, that's in uh, Liverpool, Liverpool Street, Street in the city. Yeah. Yep. And two oh. tablespoons of jojoba oil. Jojoba oh. is, um, I think it's, uh, well, anyway, I'm not sure where, except, but it's not like in the peanut family. No, okay, so peanut free, nut free. Yeah, it's yeah nut free. peanut free. Yeah. So, that's the expensive part. Jojoba is spelt J O J O. That's it. Yes, that's right. Jojoba. Yes. Jojoba. Jojoba. And I'm assuming that has come from Gould's Pharmacy as well. Yeah, all those things have. Um, you might want to make sure you have a window open at home when you're doing this because you don't want your fire alarm to go off. However, you might attract bees. Some, like we did oh, wow. it at, um, outside at St. Mary's College. One lunchtime, and we had about three bees. Oh, come. how nice! Because it's hunt, it's like honey. Yeah, and we just gently say goodbye, bees. Goodbye. <laughs> so you can see the the mixture is um, melting nicely in the fry pan. Yeah. What temperature have you got that oh, on? Oh, really low. Really low. Really okay, low. so it's, it's a sort of low, slow burn. Low, or slow, slow, slow uh, melt. Um, and also, I have a little bit of protection for the table or the carpet. Oh, that's a good idea because it hard might. To get it yeah. Off. Yes. Yes. Now over here, I have fondue forks. <laughs> They're really sharp Fabulous. forks. And let's make one now. Oh, that's great because you don't want to put your fingers mm. in there, do you? So I, I get the fluff off by doing this. <laughs> Someone will have to vacuum after this. <laughs> <laughs> and I pop it in. There are different ways to make this. Some people make them in an oven. Some people make oh, them look with at a, it. A, a George Foreman sort of grill thing. Yeah. I'll just make sure it's all immersed. And I've got my own little funny little technique. I, I'm lucky I made a batch up before. Um, see how it looks like it's wet? Yes. That's what we want. Yes. So you've yeah. got to get every every little bit of it covered in the yeah. mixture. Yeah. It's like cooking. Yeah. And yeah, there's lots of other ways to reduce waste. We've, we've sort of got lots of ideas like bring yeah. your key cup. Yes, when keep you get cup. A coffee. Yes. What um, other things? Um, you can take your own bag to the shop. Yes. You could actually make your own shopping bags. Maybe we could do this on another show out of old t shirts. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. That's fun. Yeah. So that's the, reuse. Yeah. The other big one that I've noticed a lot of people doing is um, not using plastic straws. Yeah, so. Saying no to plastic pla straws. Saying no to straws. I mean, we have this reusable one at home, which is pretty crazy. Oh, yes. It's hard to, hard to clean. clean. <laughs> Just use it for water. Yeah, you can get a stainless steel straw. And yes, little, they're, they're becoming a lot more popular, aren't they? If you need a straw. Like, not many people really, really actually need no, straws. No, that's right. Like, why bother? Anyway, I'm going to drag this up. So that's not been in there for very long, has it? No, no. Um, it does, when you're making this, it does take a little while for the, when you've got the resin, for that resin to melt. And it gets very sticky. So just imagine that I had waited. 10 minutes yes, to, yes. Be, to be ready but do keep it on low or what I first used to use was a slow cooker so anyway we're dragging it up the sides and because I'm frugal I make it all drip that yeah thing. so that you can I was just going to say you so could we can make probably more. make another one yep. yeah yeah <laughs> oh and that's I'm great so you're just trying to get all the drips off trying to get all the drips yep. off and voila and do you have to hang it hang it up to dry no, no. and in a school setting what I do is I have a queue of kids, and I say, um, here, this one's for you, hold this. Hold it's this, not hot. yep. It's not wow. hot. This is just hand hot at the moment. And if we had a line of kids, I'd have some newspaper on the floor and say, hold that. Next. Oh, that's wonderful. So that's almost ready, once it's sort of cooled down a little bit, it's almost ready to use. Yeah. You can Fantastic. Use it now. Oh, I've got a few streaky marks, but then you know it's handmade. That's wonderful. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and you can fold this. And how many times could you use that? Oh, um, maybe a hundred. Don't oh. run it under the hot towel wow. because the wax will melt. Yes. <laughs> I don't put meat. I don't put. So no I meat or, or then you can't those really, sorts of products. People who really love yeah to make sure they're 
food safe. You and wouldn't, you wouldn't put meat in. And if you're washing it under the tap with cold water, just a little bit of mm. detergent and to just clean lukewarm. it. No, just lukewarm water. Just lukewarm but water. If, I mean, if you've only had fruit in there, doesn't or really need crackers yep. or a muffin. Yeah, just, just brush it off. Brush it off. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Wipe it. Um, I, I don't know if there's people who would find that unacceptable, but. I've never got sick. <laughs> no, no. And just think of all the um, plastic um, that you're saving by using just one yeah. of those beeswax wraps. Yeah. If you can use it 100 times, that's incredible. Yeah. Wow. So imagine that's your fruit. You just wrap it up. It's very sticky. Oh, look at that. Yeah, well, that's quite a large <laughs> one for a piece of fruit. But it's sticky. That's it fantastic. Doesn't, it doesn't come off. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Um, and Marie, just before we go to our little break where um, schools that are watching can think about their questions that they have for Marie, you have brought in a little game or a little activity that uh, would be great if we could have a look at too. Yes. So we might just um, move that, that frying pan. Yeah, it gets us to think about how um, biodegradable things are. Yes, um, that's great. Pop that on the. Yes. We'll swap over. So, so what have you got there, Marie? It's an assortment of random things. I'm not promoting any particular. No. Brand <laughs> Forget the brands. Yep. Forget the brands. So we've got a can. Plastic bag. It's actually a litter bag <laughs> from the 70s. Oh yes. A oh, bit of old fabric. Plastic bottle. Some stuff from the beach that I found. Oh yes. Some rope. Yes. It's yes. A fuzzy bit of rope. Uh, a beans can. Beans can, a piece of wood, and we'll just say a plastic bag. Okay, so what the challenge is um, at school or wherever you are is to think about how these decompose in the ocean. Everyone's heard about plastic in the ocean. Oh, I've got two plastic bags. Um, and how terrible that is for seabirds and sea life mm. and seals, playful seals that get caught up in rope and all those tragic things that mean that animals perish because of our accidentally getting rubbish into mm. the ocean. And that can be from your picnic or from, you know, even at school you're having play lunch and then it, it's a windy day and it goes down the creek mm. and then the creek flows into the sea. And it ends up in the, in the ocean. It ends up in the ocean. Anyway, so we're thinking about what decomposes the quickest. So... Um, I'm not sure how to do this right now, <laughs> but have a think, mm. or maybe in the five minute break, yeah. what would decompose the quickest. Um, and which would take the longest. Oh, maybe mm. if that's the time to think about it yeah. in that break. Yeah. And then so I'll in that break, have a, yes, have a think about these items that Marie's put on the screen and think about which one will decompose fastest and perhaps which is the really, really bad culprit. And put them in order. Oh, and think about putting them in order. Okay, good. Yeah. And when we come back, you, you can you can put them in order and, and show us. Yeah. And um, so we might um, go for a five-minute break now and have a think about some questions that you've got for Marie and have a think about um, this challenge here that we're posing for you. So we'll, we'll see you in about five minutes. So this end of the... Welcome yeah. back, everybody. Um, we've got some questions that have come in. That's fantastic. And what we're going to do first, before we get to the questions, is I'm going to very quickly see if I can solve this challenge. So you would have had a go uh, in the break, but I'm going to um, see if I can try and work out which of these things will uh, degrade the fastest I'm going to go. Is that right? I'll do the, well, the fastest first. Up one end. All right, so I think um, the fabric is my first so thing. I'll put that there. Okay. Um, then I'm going to say the wood. Now it's going to get tricky for me. Um, oh, they're all, they all look um, quite terrible. Uh, maybe the string from the sea. Then I'm going to say the can. The steel can? <laughs> yep. Now I'm really in trouble. Um, I'm going to say the... Um, Oh, the, the drinking can? Eh, I really don't know. The plastic bag and then the plastic bottle. So I wonder if, you're, if, if what you, you came up with is similar. Uh, that's very hard uh, to do. How did I go, Marie? Well, um, 
I have to look at my notes. <laughs> um, the wool sock, that's in the right place. Yes. One to five years to decompose in the ocean. Wow. Then, um, oh, I haven't got a list for wood, but I would, I would definitely say that was next. Oh, good. I'm doing well. Um, let's talk about this later. <laughs> <laughs> the steel can. Tin, some people call it a tin can, 50 years to decompose in the ocean. Oh, goodness. Um, then the aluminium can, and you can talk later about why it is that way. Or shall I tell everyone, Louise? Mm. Well, the steel rusts. Oh. The aluminium doesn't rust. Oh. So we have 50 years, and we have 200 to 500 years. Then there's a bit of conjecture because plastic hasn't been around for very long mm -hmm. in our lifetime. Like plastic is only really 100, 200 years old in our, our knowledge of plastic. Mm. Um, but according to my thing, the plastic bottle will take 450 years. The plastic bag will take 500 years. Oh, my goodness. And the fishing line, if it, well... Oh, fish, yes, if that's what, yeah. If it was fishing line, yeah. say, would take 600 years. But... Um, personally, basically, I reckon just hundreds of years. Wow. In essence, because we haven't known about plastic for mm. very long and we haven't studied that much. But that's the the feeling that plastic takes a really, really, really long time to decompose. Good gracious. Even, I, I feel very, um, that's very eye-opening, isn't it? Yeah, to think about the, yeah. the how long those things take yeah. to decompose. Let's, ha let's do a couple of um, quick questions, Marie. Uh, we've got a... Uh, a question from um, Amy and Amy asks how much rubbish kills turtles each year? Amy, a long time ago people used to say that 100,000 animals a year were perishing in the ocean and I think that's a total underestimation of animals that are killed in the ocean. There's a lot that we don't see mm. and a lot of plastic um, coming from our rivers and our stormwater drains. Um, I don't know if anyone's added up specifically how many turtles mm. are killed, and if they have, I'm not sure exactly. But suffice to say that um, stuff like this, or I don't know if you've seen a picture of turtles, they think this is a jellyfish. Yes. Like the animals are Because it floats silly. in the water, doesn't That's it? That's what they mm. know. They think, oh, that looks mm. like a lovely jellyfish. Mm. And then a turtle will swallow that, or part of it, and unlike other animals, even if a vet finds the turtle, they can't cut them open. Like mm. you could cut us open mm. a little bit and, <laughs> and get try and get things out. Yeah, mm. but a turtle will definitely perish, even if a human finds it. Birds. Um, uh, Dr. Jennifer Lavers does a lot of work yes. on birds. Yes. She's based at UTAS. Yes. And Professor uh, Dr. Heidi Alman worked in Midway Atoll which is halfway between Japan and America. And they, they, they were clean, looking at all the rubbish that washed up there. Yeah, they? They, they, there was a lot of rubbish. Mm. That, because of the way the ocean currents mm. work, Midway Atoll, this tiny little island, yeah. it happened to be um, two things, an American base, so she got to stay there, a Navy base, and this beautiful haven for albatross. But the albatross mm. would see toothbrushes and cigarette mm. lighters and mm. think that they were squid. And perish from yeah, and seabirds they will albatross um, to feed their babies in the nest. They basically throw up. Like, yeah. Oh. So they go flying around, mm. and then to bring food home to their baby in the nest, they basically vomit. Mm. But the little chick sitting there, and that's just getting more and more in their tummy, <gasps> and it fills up their tummy. Yeah. So they can't get more other food, and and they can't get rid of it out the other end. So they basically die, most likely, from um, plastic ingestion. From plastic waste. So we have to do everything we can to try and you know, reduce yeah. all of the stuff that's ending up in the ocean. A couple of other quick questions. Um, oh, we probably said the acronym. Arias has asked, where does Marie work? Full it's, name. <laughs> yes. um, I work for EPA Tasmania, which is an abbreviation of the organisation that supports the Environment Protection Authority. 
There we go, Environment Protection Authority, Tasmania. Yeah. And Arias has got another question, which uh, we're going to do. So uh, Arias asks, could, could you give me a list of the ingredients for the beeswax wrap, please? Yeah. We will do that. We'll yeah. post it on the um, Underwood Centre website on the facebook on on facebook we'll put up um the ingredients for those beeswax wraps there amy has a question how many things can we use in the wax paper wrap so i'm thinking about your question um i'm not sure if you mean what kinds of things can we use wraps for like we can wrap bread or carrots or a cake or, or mm. whatever almost um, anything really yeah i mean if you had a small wrap the only thing you could put in there is a small thing, um, and you can make a little parcel actually. Yes, you probably look wrap it up somewhere. like a soft taco. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like, a, like an envelope. And yes, it's like so an envelope. Sticky. Yes, yep. Yeah. So, how many things we could fit in? I think you might mean what type of things. I'm not yeah. sure. Um, Mate, we'll, we'll think about all sorts of things you can put yeah. in there, really, oh, yeah. except meat. I yeah, think Marie I just was saying. Put meat or fish because you meat can't, or fish. Yeah, you can't really sterilise it. Yes. By hot water. Yeah. And don't put them in the dishwasher either. What about dairy products? Would they um, be all right? I, put, I use cheese. Cheese. I wrap yep. cheese in it. So as a food storage thing, I use wraps not only when I go out and about. Yes. Yep. Yeah, to store things in the refrigerator and yes. and those sorts yep. of things. Um, I've got a question for you, Marie. Um, I have heard that the container refund scheme is going to be mm. introduced in Tasmania. Now, we had this uh, where I grew up in South Australia uh, for years. Um, what is it and when are we going to have it here in Tasmania? Yes. Well, there's, um, it's a scheme where you can take back your beverage containers like cans yep. and bottles things that you normally consume away from home, drink containers, yep. drink containers, and you'll get 10 cents back for each of those. So you'll be able to go to a depot or maybe some kind of store or maybe even to a reverse vending machine Yes. where you pop the container in and you get 10 cents back as an incentive to get people to recycle mm. and especially to reduce litter. Yes, it's, a fa a it's fantastic in the litter stream yeah so if we so i think what happens is you pay a little bit more money for, like yes. the 10 cents gets added on to the price of the the drink yes. um, but then you get the 10 cents back when you recycle the bottle a, a lot of children when i was growing up used to make their pocket money this way you would go into the supermarket and, and take back all of your um, glass bottles and plastic bottles and cans yeah, and things yeah. and when when do you think we're going to have it here oh, in tasmania uh, the end of next year the oh that's fantastic yeah, so cause... schools would be able to really mm -hmm. sort of try and collect a lot of containers and raise money mm -hmm. that way that would yeah. be fantastic we can't start collecting yet because we're not charging the money that attracts the 10 cents oh it's hard to explain yeah so it'll when start when it comes in you can start yeah and um, it could be a fundraiser for the school. They do that in New South Wales. It's called Return and Earn. Oh, that's but great. I don't know if we'll have that name, but but yeah. we might have a similar thing. That's yeah. something that's yeah. really interesting. I think that'll be a real game changer, also. Because we don't want litter, and we don't want these going down the stormwater into no, the ocean. No, no. It all, it's all part of the same story. And Marie, talking about plastic, you know, a lot of uh, the plastic we use um, is single use or disposable plastic, uh, but there are some things that we use that you've said are not oh. not all bad. Well, you um, know, so you've got some things yeah. here, haven't you? I mean, I've got the keep cup, which um, is plastic. Is plastic, <laughs> um, and plastic itself is not necessarily evil. Like we're sitting at a table that's plastic, which is more durable, arguably, than a wooden one. Mm. Like. My car is a lot lighter weight because it has plastic, plastic in it. Plastic in it. Therefore, mm. I use less fuel. There's a lot to think. But about 36% of our plastic is disposable. So it's, it's what we call so, single-use plastic. So that's yeah. the stuff that we really need to be yeah. recycling or, or even trying to reduce our, yeah. our use. Yeah, mm. we can. We can reduce straws, um, take away cups. Um, instead of going to the supermarket and getting a bag for your... Um, veggies you could take on a reusable one like oh, yes, this you that's could make a good one idea. yourself so little things like that um they can make a big difference yeah can't they? we can have um you can take your own bag to the shop this one's interesting because that's a campaign that brisbane city council ran every time you go for a walk pick up 50 uh, pick up two pieces of rubbish oh wow a week or something so every year you'd pick up 104 pieces of rubbish 
That's a good. Oh, so that's why it's called so 104, 104 or more. more. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. I mean, you could use that as a shopping bag. Yes. Um, or if you go for a walk, pick up some rubbish. Yeah. Uh, so plastic doesn't end up in the sea. And what we haven't talked about is sometimes the sea animals get tangled in the rubbish. Yes. So they can either one um, accidentally eat it and it fills their tummy or they get all tangled like a seal, it's really playful. I've seen pictures. Mm, and mm. they don't have scissors or no. you know, the capability to get it off. Yes, that's right. So they, they can't hunt the same, they starve or they can't swim away from the predator. So it's it's it's, it's really so important. yeah really important. And, and Marie, we we talk about um, some things being biodegradable, and mm. I think a lot of people think, oh well, I, I will buy this because it's biodegradable. Mm. Um, is that going to solve the problem? Well, it's really tricky because some things are almost like pretend biodegradable, mm. <laughs> or they're partly biodegradable, and they don't biodegrade as fast as we want. And the notion that something is biodegradable, well, uh, it used to be that it decomposed in 21 days oh so that's what it but, sort of I meant mean, but if that mm. ended up in the water mm. and it was day 15 it would still hurt an animal Th okay that's a good so, point yeah um some things that are biodegradable are less biodegradable than um, we'd hope um but now the government and even the packaging industry itself was fantastic it's it's coming up with an australian standard um, 4736, <laughs> which means that it really does compost and biodegrade. Ah, okay. So um, look out for that if you're shopping and if you can think of that. Um, best to avoid plastic if you can, full stop. Yes. And um, it's a minefield. Because if you had something that was partly biodegradable, say it was a bottle that was partly biodegradable, and you added it to the recycling scheme, and you made a new bottle out of that, but part of it was biodegradable, that won't contain your drink. Ah. So actually, it would be better to make sure it was either recyclable or totally biodegradable, not, not mixed ah, up. Not mixed up. Mm. I see, yeah. I see. Yeah. And um, I'm just seeing if we had any more questions come in here, I think. No, I've got, I have control here. Let me just see if there are any more that have come in there. I have uh, just wanted to ask you to finish off because we're almost out of time. Um, you mentioned earlier that you've developed some resources for teachers. Yes. And there is a website. And I'm wondering, first of all, if you might just show that to us again and then I mm. can mention the website. And we can put that website up on the Facebook um, page as yes. well. So, Marie, you've got... Are that there for different grades that you've developed those yes. resources? So, I've got... Um, I brought one in, but... There's one for kinder to grade one on sort of general waste issues. The grade two one is about litter. The grade three one is about paper. Grade four, plastic. And grade five, just released, is about food waste. Oh, they sound so fabulous. There are many, many, many pages and there are many activities. I love hands on stuff. Oh, that's great. We'll have and to have you, activities. we'll definitely have to have you yeah. back. Yeah. Um, I'll just, I will tell you that website, but we'll put it up on the Facebook page. It's www.epa.tas.gov.au forward slash waste dash education. But as I said, we'll put that up on the Facebook account. Mm. Well, Marie, um, it has been fabulous to have That's you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for, for coming in and sharing all of this fantastic information, but also this really practical idea about how we can make a wrap. And look, I got the wrap. And <laughs> I can tell you, it smells like honey. It smells beautiful. Yeah. So it's not only a, a fantastic thing to use, but it's a lovely thing to use as well. Thank you so much, you, Marie. Yeah, it was fun. That was Marie Backer, who is our special guest this week. Now, um, just a note, for those of you who might be watching this as a recording from the Children's University portal, you might like to write a reflection about what you've seen today. And now next time on the program, we have got some special guests who are coming in and they're both called Gina and they're coming in from Hydro Tasmania. So just keep your eye out for uh, what that um, topic is going to be. Um, and that's going to be in two weeks time on Wednesday, the 16th of June. And that's all from me. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode and I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure you did. I have learned a lot. Um, and I'm going to go off and get that recipe and make my own beeswax wraps and 
we will see you next time. Bye everyone, take care.